Weekend All. Ira Epstein with your weekend edition of your financial market wrap-up. And this wrap-up is for Friday evening. We're at the 8th of April, 2022. So let's talk about what we've got. We still have interest rates climbing away. We don't have the inversion at this point in time. It can come back. It keeps flirting back and forth with it. We had another stellar gain in the energy market. Each weekend we seem to go in and the market anticipates the worst that can happen in Ukraine and we get those markets. We had today also, if you're looking at the grain markets, big performance. We have the final uh, numbers from the USDA and these are ending stocks and uh, they showed no real change from the last report. So the market's going to view that as tight because anything that goes wrong especially anything in the wheat market, really sets the market on fire as you've lost a lot of the wheat out of Ukraine and Russia for the export. In the metal markets, we're looking at a market that uh, picked itself up. We'll see on the weekly charts as we get there in the uh, metal update how that's faring at this point, but it's not under the 1900 level. And currencies today were sort of a mixed bag. And you're back down in most of the uh, stock indices today. And it was a day where they were fighting for direction violently. It was all over the board. And one last thing, natural gas. Well, this market backed off finally today. It's been a stellar performer to the upside. So as we look at the pullback on a monthly chart, and remember, we're only at the 8th of April, you're down 1% for the month. The market's still above the 18-week moving average of closes, so it has a, a general bias to the upside. That number comes in at 42.52, let's call it. That's a couple hundred points away. You'd have to have a pretty sizable break. When I look at what the market pulled back to this week, you pulled back to the 18-week average of closes. You closed slightly over it. So you'd spent a little time over it back here at uh, this week of April 1st, and the week after, just prior to that, you were up also. So now this is your battleground. I've gone on record saying I do not think the market's going to make new highs. I think you have too much coming at you in the way of the runoff of the balance sheet. I think you have too much coming at you in the way of a series of 50 basis point hikes. I wouldn't be surprised you get two or three of them. The market's pretty well priced in 100% probability in May and I'm already looking better than a 50% probability in June. The quicker they get this done, then the market backs off. I'm for one not in the camp. They're going to go and go and go with interest rate hikes. I think the hikes will slow the economy down where the Fed will find that they've done their job. In fact, the market will have done their job for them before they even have to complete their job. That's my guess on, on where we're at. This is also the time frame in the month of April where you normally have an up month. Now, there's two things I look at. The Facts don't change that out of the past 25 years, 20 of those years saw April have a gain. And in the past 15 years in a row, if you bought on the uh, April 7th and you came out on the 29th, close to close, the market has been higher. Can't get away. Those are the facts. None of that means you're going to have an up month this month. It's just what was. So this pullback is sort of healthy if the market's going to lift from here. What could make it lift? Well, we're not going to keep discounting the Ukraine war. Rather, it's going to be earnings right now. We're going to start with the big boy earnings. The banks are going to come out, so on and so forth. They can certainly be bad and drop the market, but I think the first quarter was a pretty good quarter for all kinds of companies. It's from that quarter on, once the invasion with uh, Russia into Ukraine began and the inflation scenario that caused and the cutoff of supplies that that did it. Labor wages, they are on fire. People can't hire enough good workers. 21 bucks an hour in Chicago doesn't hire people. I wish I could tell you that it did. It's not. It's not attracting them. I talked to my friends that own companies where you have uh, workers in warehouses and the like, restaurateurs. 21 bucks doesn't attract. When we take a look at the weekly chart, you can see that the market's sort of caught between 4,800 down to, let's call it, near the 4,100 level. The overall trend on a weekly chart is up. You have a pattern of higher lows, higher highs. The market pulled back to the 18-week average, so you're under it, so you have some downside bias. To get back over it, you just got to get over 4,504. 
the market probably gives you the all green signal that it's going to go even higher if you can clear 4631, but I have to know where the Bollinger Bands are. And they're at 4811, and I don't think they can be hit. That would create the new high in the market. So I'm in disagreement because I don't believe you're going up to a new high. I don't think anything warrants that occurring at this point in time. So it's got to be a window envelope that I don't show here that I think the market will have some trouble with. When I come to the Dow, again, you got to the 18-week average. I'll come back here. Your battlegrounds, the 18-week average on the E-mini. What do you think it is in the Dow on a weekly chart? The trend is up. The bias is down. You don't have a sell signal or a buy signal, therefore. Where's the battleground in the NASDAQ? 18-week average, same thing. When the market got down to the 100 and the lower Bollinger Band, it was very solid support, but this is pretty solid resistance, and there's a theme here. In order to get to the upper Bollinger Band here, you've got to get pretty close to the all-time high, not quite there. You have to, I believe, get, uh, if I'm correct, to a new high to break through in the Dow. Uh, the Russell, down to major support. Again, the trend is up. You have higher lows, higher highs. You fought the battle over the past three weeks now at the 18 week and you've pulled back to the uh, 100. But the trend remains up and supports at 1894, let's call that, off the Bollinger Band. Now, you've got what we call the makings of this Gorilla Glue trade. Now, let me explain that term. We all know what Gorilla Glue is. They've done a phenomenal job of teaching us for the average person. You go into the store and you think the strongest glue you can buy is Gorilla Glue. It may not be the case, but that's what we think. It's when a market latches onto that Bollinger Band and just sits on it. That's what you're doing. It's often accompanied either by creating or already having an embedded reading. So momentum locks in, this locks in on it. It's hard to beat it until you get the uh, momentum, the red line, getting back over 21 in the Bollinger Band. I'm sorry, the slow stochastic. 10-year note, same thing, embedded reading. You latched on. Now, where could you go? Do you think you're going right off the bat to 3%? You could. But there'll be a number here, two and a half to three, where the market's probably going to say, I've overdone it, I'm going to get a bounce. And that often happens, you spin away from this, you don't hit the Bollinger Band, and you begin the small rally number, for whatever reason. I'm not going to give you the fundamentals, because I don't know what would cause it. But right now, you've locked in, and this rules the day. You don't need to have, when you have an embedded reading, a pattern of lower highs, lower lows. This rules the day. When it's under 20, it's bearish as can be. When it's over 80, it's bullish as can be. And until it's lost, the pros will come in and sell the rallies, ideally. I have the enhanced Bollinger Band course to teach you how that's done. There's a technique to it. There's a moving average you use for it. It's all in the course on our website at irapstein.com. In the dollar index, it's a flip-flop. You got the Gorilla Glue trade. You've locked in six weeks in a row at or above the upper Bollinger Band. You get over it, you get back under it. Now, how many weeks do we have in a row over it? Not there. One week, two weeks. This week was, uh, if I'm correct, over it as well. Three weeks, four weeks, four weeks in a row over it. You rarely get beyond five weeks. It means you don't go to the six. So I think you've got a market coming up for a bit of resistance staring you in the face. Uh, over the next week as we get into it. That would mean the flip-flop for the euro currency because 40% of that index is made up of the euro. You can see it's nowhere near as weak uh, on the reverse side as the dollar is bullish. The dollar is quite bullish here. It just keeps marching along. As I said, I have long-term price counts. If you haven't seen our price counts, they're important, and they're up in the 104 area. It's rare that you get to a third price count. It could do it. That's all I'm saying. You've already hit the easy money. That's the point. Uh, let me get back now to our Canadian friend. You have a lower low, higher high, and outside weak down. All happening at the upper bands. You probably do for a bit of a correction. Could easily pull back to the 18-week average, but there's no trend going on there. What about that Gorilla Glue trade? I'm going to say it again right here. One, two three, 
four, five, five weeks in a row now under the ban. I believe the market will fight hard to go the other way this week. I am not bullish. This is a sign of immense weakness, but it also gets overdone. And remember, 95% of the time, the markets will trade within the band. You came out of sideways action, not as bad as I thought. This would have been more bearish. Notice how long and sideways it was, and you did break down. And if you look at it, you consolidated between the 18-week average of close and the lower Bollinger Band, but this is much bigger than I expected it would be. In Bitcoin, the daily charts are bearish. The um, weekly charts have pulled back to the 18-week average, so the market's sort of in no man's land right here. This chart is bullish, the dailies are bearish. The differential between the Brent and WTI crude sitting here at $4. So six and a half to seven dollars got too expensive, the differential. The market's all pulled back in and that's what you're dealing with. You have a market that's got a lot of divergence on the weekly chart. I think you see momentum is down and just pointing away down. You've also got lower highs, higher lows on this chart. There is no trend to trade right now. You're doing this in the crude and you see it because you start off your one two percent higher on the day you end up down two percent you flip flop it back and forth and that's what's been going on now for a couple of weeks wti not to be outdone it's right with it higher lows lower highs i don't see a trend at this point rebob gas momentum down lower highs higher lows same thing on the weekly charts so you put it all together Sort of a confusing picture, not a surprise. We're going to start seeing some more central banks meet this coming week. I think the European does. We'll get an idea of what they're talking, uh, what they're going to do with interest rates. There's no key economic data due out on Monday. And remember, Good Friday's right around the corner. I'm Ira Epstein. You have yourself a great weekend. And you might want to take a look at this before I go away from you. You know, one of the things we do is, as futures traders, we write about futures, but in a big way. If you're a spread trader, an options trader, and the cash markets are straight out futures, we're covering it. We put out probably, I don't know, I, I, never, I haven't counted it recently, recently, but I'll bet it's 50 plus stories a day, charts, special reports, news commentaries of all types in the market. In the grains today, you had the supply demand report. We were all over that. So if you'd like to see what we give our clients, we'll give you a, a free trial to see what our clients come to us for. How do you get it? Just go to our website, www.iraepstein.com. On the top left, you're going to see the word free offer. Just go there, the free trials, choose what you want. I'm Ira. Have a great weekend.